Rust has a lot of settings that can be confusing and sometimes contradictory. So I did a lot of research and testing to help you find the best settings in Rust for high FPS and best image quality. I'll explain what each setting does, how it affects performance, which ones are necessary and will give you an advantage in the game, and which ones are completely useless and can reduce your performance. On top of that, I'll help you optimize your system, whether it's Windows 10 or 11, and show you the best NVIDIA settings as well as useful keybinds and console commands in Rust. If you find this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button below and subscribe to the channel, it helps me a lot. With that said, let's move on to optimizing your system. Before we begin, let me say that we won't be touching any of the crucial settings in the Windows or Nvidia panel that could affect your PC's performance, so you don't need to worry. And the first thing you need to do is check for Windows and Nvidia updates. To do this, press Start button, go to Settings and open Update and Security option. Here you need to check for the latest updates and if necessary, install them and reboot your PC. Once you have done this, click the Pause Updates button a few times. In this case, Windows will not automatically install updates without your permission, which can be annoying, especially if it happens during gameplay and causes a drop in FPS. Next, update your NVIDIA driver. To do this, type NVIDIA in the search bar, then click Drivers and make sure that it's up to date. If not, install the latest driver. Press Windows plus R buttons and type %, %10%. These are all the temporary files your system stores. You should clean this folder at least once a month. Just press Ctrl plus A and click Delete. And do the same with your recycle bin to keep your system clean. Now it's time for the hard part. If you have an Intel CPU, you need to enable the XMP profile in the BIOS to get your RAM to perform at its best. If you have an AMD CPU, you need to find Expo profile in the BIOS. To make sure you don't have any problems with this, in a YouTube search write how to enable Expo or XMP on your motherboard. For example, I'm using Gigabyte. And following the example in the video, enable this option. It will take you less than a minute, but you'll get a small performance boost without spending a penny. Next, open Steam. Right-click on Rust, open Properties and go to Installed Files. Click this button here to make sure that the files for this game are installed correctly and there are no issues after updates. Click on Browse, right-click on Rust Client, open Properties, go to Compatibility and click on Change Settings for all users. Make sure that Disable Full Screen Optimization is checked on. Go to Change High DPI Settings and make sure that this one is enabled. Click OK and Apply. Now let's move on to launch options. The only option you need to change is max memory. This will help Rust to use more RAM, thus reducing lags and drops in FPS. On the screen you see the values to use, depending on your RAM size. However, exceeding your RAM limit may cause the game to crash, so be careful. By the way, I'll leave all these launch options in the comments below, so you can just copy them. Here are a few more things you need to do to get the best results. I'll show you everything as quickly as possible so you don't waste time. First go to search bar and type in graphic settings. Turn off this option, add Rust into graphics performance preference, here's the path to it. Go to options and select high performance and click save. Next search for background apps. Make sure that you have turned them all off, because these apps will kill your FPS while working at the background. Now go to game mode settings. Turn on the game mode, then go to the game bar and turn off everything. And do the same with captures. And of course, don't forget to disable mouse acceleration. To do this, type mouse settings in the search bar, open additional mouse settings, go to pointer options and check this box and click apply. If this setting is enabled, your DPI will change depending on how fast you move in the mouse, resulting in very bad and unstable aiming. Let's move on to the Nvidia panel. On the first tab, drag the slider to the middle and select the second option. On the second tab, you need to change just a few settings. Find the low latency mode and change it to ultra. Open GL set to performance and power management also to maximum performance. You can also see the rest of my settings and copy them. I don't recommend changing anything in the program settings, just leave everything at default here. On the third tab, just select your graphics card. In this tab, select your resolution and the maximum refresh rate of your screen. On the next tab, you can change the digital vibrance to make the game more colorful and bright. These are the settings I use to get the best image quality. Here you need to select full screen, then GPU scaling instead of a display and make sure this box is checked. 
Also, go down and make sure you have the highest possible refresh rate and click Apply to save all of these changes. The system optimization is done. Now let's move on to the Rust settings. For a better understanding, here's my PC specs. I have an i7-87 non-K version, a regular 2060 Note Super and 32 gigs of RAM. So let's start with the Options tab. Field of view. The higher the value of the setting, the more you see at the edges of the screen. I recommend using the maximum value for the best visibility. Headbob. Absolutely useless option that should be turned off. Be sure to enable Crosshair if you are not using programs like Crosshair X. Leave the heat cross on, it will show hits on your enemies. And make sure you enable compass visibility, it's a very useful setting. The rest of the settings in the gameplay section aren't that important, so you can just copy them from me. In censorship section, change nudity to underwear and disable everything except Steam nicknames and limit flashing. Also, make sure Max Gibbs is set to zero and creation FX is turned off. I've shown many times how much this option can affect your gameplay. In the User Interface tab, you can just copy my settings, they don't affect anything. You can toggle the game tips on or off based on how experienced you are at the game and leave the chat on or off based on your preference. In the Audio tab, just be sure to mute the in-game music to hear everything that happens around you and put the master volume higher than the game sounds volume to hear headshots with bass boost. I also recommend using the 7.1 speaker mode, which gives you a more spacious experience. In the Controls tab, put whatever you feel comfortable with. In the Screen tab, turn off VSync, put the game in full screen and remove the FPS limitation for maximum performance. In the Graphics tab, I recommend changing the graphics quality to high or ultra, as the graphics quality has almost no effect on your FPS. You can endlessly change the settings here, but if you have a bad PC or laptop, you'll still end up with a low FPS. And if you have at least a mid-range PC, it won't affect your FPS, but it will improve the image quality. Render scale set to max and turn off DLSS. Shadow quality set to 2, shadow cascades to no cascades and max shadow lights to 0. These are the best settings for shadows that don't affect FPS, but make the image quality much better. Turn the water settings to 0 and set the shaders from 0 for the best FPS to 301 if you want more details around you. Change the draw distance to 1500, shadow distance to low and parallax mapping also to low. For anisotropic filtering, I recommend playing around with this setting, as it makes the corners sharper. For example, if you use the maximum value, the grass and bushes will be more visible. These settings will affect the FPS, but you will still be able to see everything perfectly. Grass displacement should be on, and grass shadows absolutely off. Set object quality at 50, tree quality at max, and everything else set to a minimum. In the image FX tab, you have two options. If you want a beautiful image, use my settings. You will lose a few FPS, but it's worth it. If you want maximum performance, use only these three settings. And finally, in the experimental tab, enable this option and set optimized loading to partial. If your GC buffer here is not for 1096, then you need to write this command in the console. All these settings will help you load faster on the server. As for the keybinds, I won't spend a lot of time on this and will leave all the keybinds I use in the description below, so you can just copy them. Here are the most useful and popular ones. By the way, if you want to support my channel, you can join the membership and become a real chat. Here I'll be sharing exclusive tips, tricks and exploits that I found with the community. So if you have the opportunity, I'd appreciate your support. And if you want to learn more about Rust, then here's 100 advanced tips and tricks in Rust that will bring your gameplay to the next level. From the most basic and essential tips for beginners to some of the most unique and surprising tricks 